I'm Ross Middleton from BMA Hydroponics. Yeah, it's uh, April 21st, 2020. Just wanted to welcome you to Grow Your Own, our DIY series, and let you know why we're starting so late. Um, as you know, everybody's been running around with these and with masks and things like that, and this whole coronavirus thing has really put a, a kink in everybody's uh, plans. Um, we've been going gangbusters. We're considered an essential service in the uh, supply chain. So, you know, we've been kind of lucky as far as small businesses go, but we've been opening a new store. We've been doing so many things. We've, we've got so much stuff going on. And honestly, this kind of came at a, at a bad time. So it's delayed everything, basically. Uh, I'm just starting my indoor now uh, on April 21st. So, um, yeah, it's it's uh, a late start, but uh, nonetheless, I'm going to start. And if you listen to our... Um, are talking grow your own YouTube uh, you'll hear about our plans for this year some of them being uh, my first of all you know I'm gonna be doing step well versus destiny indoors that's two uh, living soil organic uh, uh, basically kits that you you put together yourself and, and we're gonna put those head to head see who wins so that's gonna be really interesting um, you know and I think it's gonna overlap too with our outdoor and the uh, so I'm gonna be doing two I'm gonna be doing indoors and outdoors pretty much at the same time But in the end, it's all gonna be really really uh, cool stuff I mean uh, doing the light deprivation thing because of the light pollution and scrogging outdoors is gonna be fun And this whole in indoor organic thing is gonna be fun I mean I, a lot of people a lot more people want to grow organically these days and here's a couple of easy ways to do it um, You know that there are other ways to do it if you want to do it yourself and you can watch our uh, women who grow series on the YouTube channel and you'll see uh, true living organics there uh, where they make teas and etc and they do it that way this one these ones are like kits and they're they're ready made for anybody to use uh, you don't have to be a scientist to put this one together so um, special circumstances but we're moving on and uh, things are gonna get back to normal and we're looking forward to it and I know you are too so let's move on with the series um, enjoy sit back relax we're gonna have a lot of okay fun. let's unbox some products so First, we're going to look at the step well. Not a lot of unboxing to do here because it didn't come in a box, but step well comes in the compressed bale. That's the soil. It's all ready to go. It's got a ton of stuff in it. It's got sphagnum peat moss. It's got the mycorrhized beneficial bacteria inoculum, you know, bone meal, blood meal, perlite, kelp meal, fish bone meal. It's uh, Wollastonite, worm castings, a lot of good stuff in this soil. So it's got a good nutrient value to it. Uh, but as we've sold the stuff, the feedback we've been getting is that all on its own, just using the EM1 and the step well by itself, doesn't quite have enough to, to get it to the finish line, if you know what I mean. If you want those nice, big, fat, heavy, smelly, tasty buds, um, people started top dressing basically with uh, a little bit of Gaia Green 444 and some Power Bloom uh, guy from Gaia Green, also in flower. So um, I think, uh, I think step well took the hint, they got the message, and thank you Stepwell for doing that, because now look what we've got here. We've got some top dresses from Stepwell. So we've got the one for the vegetative stage, and we've got the other one for the bloom stage. The veg stage, I, I'm guessing, is probably the equivalent of the Guy Green 444, and the top dress for the bloom is probably the equivalent of the uh, Power Bloom. Um, I, I, I don't know what the NPK is on these. Stepwell didn't put it on the bag. If I had a suggestion to make, I'd say, hey, put, put the NPK on the bag, because I kind of like to know what it is. But uh, anyway, moving forward, let's look at next at, yeah, Destiny. I already got in here with a hammer. I, I had to use the claw part of the hammer to get this box open, so be prepared for that if you've got the box set here. Uh, so let's opening up the box, and this is a, literally a box. First off. I see the, the feeding schedule. So we've got the feeding, uh, so you know exactly when to feed everything. On the back, you've got some info about the different products. So let's have a look at some of these different products. So you've got your launch. So this is the launch. And what they say about the launch is that uh, it's a top dress and it may provide your plants with ma macro and micro nutrients from multiple natural sources and then we have the ignition destiny's unique tea blend so this is going to be to make a tea we're going to actually feed them with organic tea that's why i have two different barrels by the way we'll get to that later but i have two different barrels one for step and one for Destiny. we have the amplify so amplify that is destiny's water conditioner that is used to continuously throughout the growing cycle 
to bring the pH of the water down to the sweet spot of 6.2 to 6.4. Thank you, Destiny. We agree on that sweet spot. And basically, this is your pH Next down. we've got in here G-Force. Little, little package of G-Force. Let's see what that does. It's Destiny's uh, foliar. It may provide hormones, trace nutrients, and natural growth, growth stimulants to improve plant viability during the vegetative stage. So, um, yeah, I'm not a big fan of, um, of spraying anything on my plants, especially in flower. This one's meant for veg, so I think I'm okay with that, and we'll give her a go and see what happens. Uh, finally, in the, in the Destiny box, we have this. This is, this is the soil. So this is actually called dark matter. It's the heart of the Destiny grow system. It begins with dark matter. Our pre-fertilized super soil with more than 20 premium ingredients. They say it'll do. Uh, it'll. They say it'll do four three-gallon pots. Um, Stepwell recommends that you use a seven. Um, I'm going to show you the pots that I'm going to use. It explain why I'm using them. Okay, so let's look at what we're going to be putting all of this fine soil into. Uh, basically, Destiny they recommend a three-gallon pot. So basically, I'm going to be using this three-gallon riso pot. Um, root printing pouch, uh, they do recommend uh, that you use the, uh, the root printing pouches. They, they tend to work better with these organic soils. They breathe better and, and things like that. So three gallon and it's going to go into, uh, I think that's a 14 inch saucer. And you can see there's just enough room around the edge to see if there's any water coming in there. You want an overwater or underwater. Um, that's especially true with these. Um, next, we got the step well. So the step well, they, they recommend a seven gallon pod. I'm assuming when they say pot, they mean a plastic pot. So what I did was I got a seven gallon plastic pot and I compared this five gallon riso pot to the seven gallon plastic pot. And lo and behold, uh, they're about the same size by volume. So this will hold as much as a plastic seven gallon. So this is what I'm gonna use for the step well and a little bit bigger saucer. I believe that's a 16 incher. So it sits in there again with just enough space around it to be able to see if there's any standing water in there. You don't want standing water. So that's what we got. I'm gonna get busy on filling these pots, finishing off the room, and getting this grow started. I'm really excited about it. Hope you are too. So step one in preparation, of course, is to <clears throat> empty out your room, get it ready, prep it. I have not really cleaned real well in here. I'm, I'm getting ready to. Um, the linoleum needs to be straightened out a little bit. Growing in some 10-gallon uh, barrels. You can get these 10-gallon barrels at BMA Hydroponics, by the way. They're not too expensive and they make great reservoirs. Of course, I got two because I'm going to be doing Destiny and Stepwell and they both have different water requirements. So that's why they're going to be separated. Oh, uh, you know, got the chalkboard cleaned off from Dev's Ebb and Flow. You may have watched that one. That's also a good episode there. Um, got to get the lights back up. So I'm going to get to work and uh, I've got a lot of stuff to do. I want to hang plastic on the wall, clean the floors. Okay, so next step, we're going to sweep the floor. Up. So I'm going to take down the old plastic and then I'm going to get ready to put up the new plastic which I'm going to have to bring in here cut I had to get this I had to go to home hardware here uh, in in my local town my local home hardware I had to phone ahead I had to ask for push pins I had to pick them up outside the building um, and get cash through with the mask and gloves and uh, pay $21 for push pins so yeah, there were, you know, there were quite a few uh, packages, but, you know, I, I just wanted to uh, get my push pins and get out. So over $20 for push pins, but that's okay. You know, it, it all pays off in the end. So these are challenging times, but we're muddling through. Anyway, off we go. I'm going to take the plastic off. Plastic's cut for the first wall. I got my push pins. I'm going to get a few together here. Try to hang on to them. And put them in my pocket, huh? Got gloves on because pushing push pins in with your bare fingers can sometimes hurt a bit. Right side up. I'm going to try to get this up as high as we can. Line it up. Put in the push pin. And then we're going to go from there. We carry on and do the. Piece going up and I have to take a little cut to go around the ductwork. So I did that ahead of time. So I'm loading it up and away it goes. 
got all the black and white plastic up, white side out, so we're all nice and reflective now. Okay, so next on the agenda is to drill my barrels. I'm going to be using uh, three quarter inch uh, fittings and a top hat grommet. Now, quite often we've we've recommended a seven eighths inch hole for the top hat grommet for the three quarter inch. Um, I'm gonna use 13 16s. I, I want an extra tight fit. I wanna make sure it's not gonna leak at all. Um, you don't want any dripping or anything like that indoors. So 13 16 and let's see how that works. Okay, so next uh, comes the grommet. This is, uh, this is what I'm calling a top hat grommet right here. You see it's got a little ring around it and uh, it kind of looks like a top hat. So basically you're putting uh, that side in with the the rim part on the outside so I'm gonna get that right in there and see that's a nice tight fit I like a nice tight fit especially for indoors that way you won't get any leakage so we're gonna be putting this straight connector into there uh, what I found that uh, helps things along a little bit is just to put a little bit of cooking oil on your fitting before you try to put it in so I got a little bit of extra virgin olive oil here and I'm just gonna give it a little just a little spray like that and maybe take some of the excess ream it around like that and then we're gonna push this in and it's gonna go all the way in, right all the way to that rim right there. So you see, that's gotta be in like that. Okay, so I just happened to lucked out here and, and got a table, an old uh, antique table, mind you. It needs to be refinished, but it's, nonetheless, it's an antique. And look how it's cut. It's got, uh, it's cut to perfectly fit these two 20 gallon that barrels. That's just so awesome. Not only that, check this out. I have no idea what the function of these was originally, but I know what I'm gonna be using these for right now. I'm going to have a hose on this one and that's going to be wound up on there and I have another hose on that one and it's going to be wound up on here. Okay, so I got all the basics done in the grow room. I've got my uh, two barrels up on, up on the old table. Got my linoleum pulled up. I see it's overlapping a little bit on the baseboard. If any water happened to spill or anything like that, it doesn't get onto your carpet. And of course, protecting your house is important. Uh, it's your investment. It's your future. Uh, you want to get the most out of it when you sell. So, you know, doing things like hanging the white plastic up and putting the linoleum down and, and maybe just, you know, putting up this 2 by 4 And you see there's only two screws that hold that up there. And you see I got a little sponge in between. So that protects the ceiling. So when I take that down, there's going to be two holes. I'll just put a little polyfill on that and we'll repaint. Uh, everything will be just perfect in here. We'll put a bed in there and nobody will ever knew, know that it was used as a grow room. And that's important. There's a lot of stigma attached to that. But if you're a good grower, you, you do things right and you keep things clean. So you don't have to worry about it as long as you take the right steps. So that's what we're doing. So let's move on. I'm going to line up the pots on the floor and let's have a look at what we're going to do. Who has huge buds? You do. If you shop at BMA Hydroponics, attend one of BMA's educational seminars and learn the secrets of growing, harvesting, processing, and consuming quality cannabis and cannabis products. Learn how to make better extracts, edibles, and medicinal creams at prices you can afford. Visit BMA Hydroponics at 404 Maitland Drive, Belleville, or call 613-967-9888. The only way to go. So this is the arrangement. Uh, over here, we've got uh, two rows of four of the five-gallon pots. That's going to be for the step well. And then over here, we've got two rows of four of three gallon pots, and that's gonna be for the destiny. So the next step is gonna to be to fill these pots and see just how much soil uh, they give you and if it's adequate. So uh, destiny says that it's a four plant package with three gallon pots. Here's the pots, there's four, there's another four. I have two boxes, so I think we're all good. Let's start filling pots. Okay, so we finished with the dark matter. <clears throat> See, it didn't quite fill them all the way to the top. And I'm pretty sure that's by design. Uh, the plants that I'm gonna be putting in here are in five inch square pots. So by the time I get those transplanted in here, it's probably gonna bring the level of the soil right just up to where it needs to be. So I think that's the perfect amount of soil from Destiny. Thank you, Destiny. Okay, so Stepwell's gonna take a little bit different approach here. We've got the bale. I'm gonna cut this bale. I'm gonna see if it'll fill all eight of these pots I'm pretty sure they will. They're five gallon pots, uh, equivalent to a seven gallon plastic, and we'll see if one bale will do it all. So let's get busy on that. I'm gonna make uh, my standard H cut, which is what I like to do with all my compressed soils. Um, the H cut just gives you um, a, a nice opening, and it gives you something to close it back up with too. So I can now take and just kind of spread that open, 
and uh, if, when I'm done, if there's any left over, I could just fold it back up again. So let's get started filling some of these pots and just see how far they go. Took the better part of the bales of step well, except hold with one hand now. It's probably, I'd say, a little more than three quarters of it uh, went into these bags. So, yeah, it could probably get maybe uh, maybe 10 five gallon, maybe 12 out of a, a, a bale of step well. So, that's about what you got now. <laughs> As you can see, it, it's a lot uh, dirtier, it's a, it's a lot more messy to work with the step well. But you know what? That's nothing that a broom and a dustpan won't take care of. So we'll find out in the end whether it's worth all the work. But um, so far, I got to tell you, the aromas coming out of the step well are uh, are pungent. Let's just say that. Uh, but it's good smells. It's the smell of organics, and these organics are going to come to life when we put that EM. Let's clean up time. Here we go. Let's get this stuff cleaned up and get her ready to go. And here I go. or it goes out into the yard. Okay, so I want to uh, I want to go ahead and fill my, my barrels and give them a couple of days to uh, sit uh, before I actually do moisten these. So next step is to cut this tubing. So I, I'm, again, I'm using three quarter inch tubing. Hey, look what I got. Yeah, they're big shears. I know they're for cutting off branches off trees. Normally I'd use a little pair of the hand pruners that you cut the little branches off trees. They work great for cutting tubing. I'll be darned if I can find those right now. You know, spring, you put everything away and sometimes you forget where you put them. So anyway, I'm just gonna use these because they're gonna work just fine. So here we go, first step, measure it out, cut it off. Okay, next step is to take the hose and we're gonna just, just put it on there. First of all, I'm gonna use my extra virgin olive oil just to give that a little, just a little, and a little, and that's it. That should do it. Um, that's probably all we need. Maybe I'll just do a little spin around like that. And then we can take the tubing and just push it back to the wall there. You see how easy it slips on when you when you got the extra virgin olive oil on it and just go all the way all the way up in there mm -hmm. there okay so that was pretty easy it's on there now this will never leak 13 16 hole don't forget seven eighths might leak okay so next step is to figure out you know how much we're going to need I've, I've tried to cut enough off it reaches all the way to the back wall so when i go to water all these pots i can reach everybody nice and easy uh, but what I want to do is I want to put uh, one of these ball valves in line. So I'm going to come back a little bit, oh, I don't know, maybe 18 inches or so, and make another cut with the shears, and then I'm going to put that ball valve in line. And then at the end, I'm going to use this 
to reduce it down to a half inch outlet so it doesn't come out too fast okay so i would normally use half inch tubing here but because of the nature of the barrels being so thick the half inch grommets don't really fit well in there so that's why i use the three quarter feeder but in the end at the end i will have a half inch outlet and that will restrict the flow you won't get these as normal irrigation fittings but you might find them somewhere like home depot or home hardware go to home hardware it's your local hardware store and there's locally owned. so my instincts are telling me not to put the, the uh, outlet on the front but rather on the side it just kind of comes out nicer down and uh you see i've got my pet cocks in line and uh, there's my half inch end piece now i'm about to fill these uh, barrels with water so the last thing you want to do is leave this in the open position so before you start putting water in make sure you turn this thing to the off position which is 90 degrees sideways like that that's where it needs to be before you start filling don't forget or you'll have a flood so this year i got smart still got the boogie filter up there but i got smart i took a lesson from deb no more hauling buckets over and dumping them into my other barrels now I got the hose hooked up, yeah, and it's going all the way up here and right into the barrels, and then I don't have to keep hauling water. This just makes it so much easier. Get yourself a line hooked up and fill your fill it directly from the faucet. Only way to go. So we just about got the barrels all filled up. Got our lines run. No leaks down here. No leaks down here. Most importantly, right here, no leaks. Like I said, 13 16 no leaks. Okay, this one, yep, no leaks. Always check just to make sure there's no leaks and stuff. And always keep an eye on the level of your water if it's running directly in, because if you, let, you don't keep an eye on it, it's gonna overflow. Don't want that to happen. So keep an eye on things, always pay attention. Okay, done for today. It's been a lot of work. Got the pots ready, or all, everything's ready to go. All I gotta do now is let this uh, come to ambient temperature, um, add what I need to add to it, and get these things watered. Next step is gonna be to plug in my starting material and, and make sure that everybody's identified. Um, Riso pots come with these little tags attached. They tell you you know, some information about them, but the other side's blank. I'm gonna use that to write on to, to identify which uh, strain and which phenotype I'm growing in which one. And of course, I've got two rows Step well, two rows of uh, dark matter with destiny. Um, there's going to be like pheno number one over here. There's going to be pheno number one over here. There's going to be clean chemo over here. There's going to be New York OG o over here. You know, so basically I'm going to make sure that every, everything's fair and it's an apples to apples comparison. So we've got phenotypes of the uh, like phenotypes and strains on this side and this side. So in the end, we can we can measure exactly what the weight is, the height is, all those things, all the things that we like. Um, looking forward to seeing that result. And I hope you are too. In the meantime, that's it for today. I'm off to work for two more days uh, and it's a bit crazy out there uh, wearing masks and gloves and letting just one person through the door and ch shopping for them. It, it's it's a real experience. It's not like anything I've ever gone through before. But thank goodness I've got something like this to come back to and, um, and just relax and kind of enjoy my plants because we all need to get away. Not everybody's able to isolate right now. Um, we haven't been isolating. We, we've been on the front lines trying to keep people supplied and up and running. Crop failure for a medical cannabis grower is not an option. So we're there for them. We're there for everybody, uh, cannabis supply chain, and we also are there with our clinic. So we're there for you. We're not isolating. This is not a vacation for us. This is go, go, go. And I'm doing all of this right in the middle of it. And now I'm gonna have it overlap on my outdoor crop because of the delays. But you know what, that's okay. Um, these are all just challenges that we need to overcome. We're going to overcome this one. We're going to get through this. We're going to get through COVID. We're going to get through our, all of our growing issues. And um, I'm really looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And I'm upbeat about it. And I hope you are too. Good luck and stay safe.